All right, so we are, it's, it's week three now. We're in ETEC 214, previously known as NRGY 214. And um, what I'm going to do in this first little chunk, maybe it'll be 10 minutes, maybe a half hour, but I'm just going to catch up on the first couple weeks. The, um, you know, it's, it's really important that we lay a, um, a strong foundation here for the course. So let me just catch up with the first couple weeks and then we'll move into uh, into week three. So I see I've got one unread post in the forum. Let me, let me take a look at that. Uh, okay, so that's Cody. <laughs> Just saw Cody this morning. I always forget about that. It's okay. It's all right. Probably won't make the evenings. Fine. Okay. Anyway, Cody, we're glad you're here. Um, uh, even uh, meetings. Cody, uh, glad you're here, even if you're not. <laughs> um, hope to catch you in other courses. Poor Cody's going to suffer through three courses with me this semester. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I don't know, I, I think I looked a little bit at the, um, at the week one stuff. I'll, I'll just take one, um, uh, another look at it right now. And one, one thing I want to say for the record, guys and gals, um, I'm probably only going to do five grading sessions this semester. I don't, I don't, um, it, it's just, it's, you know, it's tough submitting stuff to Moodle. It is not easy grading stuff in Moodle either. I'll just let you know because you're sort of like, you know, you download, you wait, you sit there, you grade it, you upload. There's a, there's a lot of monkey business. So um, I'm hoping on Sunday to get to grading um, the first three weeks. So don't panic. You know, we're still... Um, so if you can wait for another few days, I'll, I'll have the first three weeks graded and get everyone their, their grades and let you know how it's, how it's coming along. So... Let's just also take a look at the um, um, week one assignment. I'm just going to review that very briefly. And I really do like the way Alan set this course up. I, I kind of like this book format. Kind of work your way through it. Um, so here's the assignment. And really this, this is the this number five here. Um, is the formal assignment. And I think most people have done it. If you have, great. If not, I'm going to read through it. If you want to redo it, that's fine with me too because I haven't graded a dang thing yet. So create a spreadsheet. Sorry for the typo. It's a spreadsheet, not an spreadsheet, of at least 10 items in your home or neighborhood that store energy. So um, again, the thing, the thing to keep in mind here is obviously batteries store energy uh, chemically, I've had a few people look at mechanical storage systems, so an air compressor tank would be another one. Um, you could even think of the air inside your house as storing thermal energy, right? The sun comes in and there it is. It's, it's there for a while until it leaks out. So um, um, hopefully you got creative with this. I haven't looked at it, but you know, if you're looking at mechanical, chemical, electrical, uh, one quick second, I've got to, sorry about that, it's the digital age though. Okay, so um, sorry for the interruption there. It's like I never left, but yeah. what we're <laughs> what what I'm what I'm hoping to do, and this this is really a big a big part of this class, is now that you've had your um, your 101, your 102, some of the other courses, um, ETEC 214 in some way, it's a little bit of a capstone course where you're trying to pull together a lot of concepts. So what I'm looking for is, you know, can you do the calculations on a mechanical energy system like compressed air, because we're going to see that later in the semester. Um, can you do your energy storage in a, in a chemical system like a battery? Um, you know, maybe, I don't know, um, it's, not, it's not typical that you would have uh, too many extra capacitors laying around the house, but you could think of that as like pure um, electrical storage. And then I also mentioned you, you could think about how much thermal storage there is in your house. So there's you know a few examples. So what I'm hoping to do is, and maybe someone's got a thorium reactor in their house, and, <laughs> uh, but 
Um, anyway, what I'm hoping to do is, is show a diverse set of skills because that's really what ETEC 214 is all about. Okay. Um, oh, and even food. Well, that's a chemical item, but sure. Energy storage. Cool. 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 All right. Oh, and another big part of the, the course, and this is what we're going to get into here just momentarily, is the um, sort of dollars per watt for a system or the dollars per joule for a system. You know, typically when you're putting in a renewable energy system or even a conventional one, there's going to be a certain number, like, you know, say it's a um, two kilowatt system and you pay 8,000 bucks for it, that's four dollars per watt. Um, so you can think of it, you know, as dollars per watt for the amount of power that is, a system is capable of processing. In this little case, we're looking at, um, you know, 220 milliamp hours for 15 bucks. In that case, you're looking at um, dollars per joule. So, you know, dollars per unit energy. So hopefully those two concepts are, are clear. You can pay, you know, dollars per unit power or dollars per unit energy. And I think what we'll find is that it's... Um, wildly variable. You know, obviously, you know, the, the energy in my uh, watch battery, it's tiny, but it's, it's, but I'm going to pay for that with a much higher dollars per joule than I would if I went out and, um, I don't know, bought a lump of coal or something. So, that's how to think about that. Okay. Um, cool. And then, oh, another pretty obvious one would be the thermal, uh, the thermal storage in your hot water tank. Okay, now let's get into um, the second week. There were a lot of questions on that. There's also a lot of really important uh, things in there. One thing that we typically don't think about, and I'm glad that um, Alan covers this early in the course, is the, um, the so-called time value of money. And it comes, it comes down to that, that issue of would you rather have a dollar now or a dollar tomorrow, most people are going to want that dollar now because we all know a dollar typically cannot purchase as much as it as it used to be. It used to be able to. Um, strangely, gas prices are kind of bizarrely low at the moment. I'm not sure when anyone can quite wrap their head around that. I think there's a lot of a lot of factors um, going into it. I know we've we've tried to enhance our own domestic production. Um, I don't know how much of that's coming out of the um, tar sands. I, I have heard that a lot of the um, oil work out in eastern Montana is starting to starting to fizzle. Uh, um, yeah, so, <laughs> um, which is strange. So it's, it's got to be coming from somewhere. And, um, you know, I know there are, I think that Arctic exploration kind of is on the, you know, skids for right now. I don't know if there's stuff coming out of um, uh, coming out of Africa that's that's new. Um, anyway, or it could also be. I mean, it really could be that that um, there's enough fuel efficient vehicles out there and enough people like moving back into the cities. I mean, if you've been to you know the U.S. cities lately, like New York's blowing up, Seattle's blowing up, and so I don't I don't think people really drive as much as they used to. I mean, there's still traffic jams and all that, but. Uh, there might might not be it might be a little bit of supply and demand. There's just not as much of a demand for um, gasoline. The point, though, that, I, that I'm really trying to make here is that um, energy and money are intimately related. And um, the other thing that's sometimes hard to grasp is that time and money are also related. So if um, um, like for you know. Very simple example, your home mortgage um, typically has some interest associated with it, 3.5, 4.5%. So what that means is that, um, well, it's the, same, it's the same problem in reverse. Like the bank would really like to have your, let's just say, $250,000 for your house right now. But if they can't get that, they'll just, they would be just fine taking your three hundred fifty thousand dollars over the next thirty years. That's that's kind of how it works out with, with the whole interest. That's time time value of money in general. Okay, um, let's take a look at the week two forum. I think there were some questions there, and I will I will do my best to answer this. I also want to let you know that um, 
Alan Frazier is still in the process of sending me his official solutions. You know, I, I, you know, I'll do the best I can, work through them, and come up with it. Um, I, I can't guarantee you 100% that I'm going to be a whole heck of a lot better. <laughs> you know, this this is his course, uh, not mine. But I did I did work through the majority of the problems last year. I do understand the concepts, but sometimes, as you'll see, there's a few little subtleties and, and, and tricks that um, not everybody's going to get. All right, let's take a look at this. And here's, here's, well, let's just take a look at the replies, and then I've got something to say about it. Okay. Um, here's Doty. Does anyone have any hints or recommendations for problems five and six on the homework? Let's just take a look at that. Um, if if not, uh, Sean, I'll, I'll get back to you. Oh, okay. It looks like Joe is is in there swinging, uh, learning it to five open. Uh, Joe, nice job um, posting uh, a PDF instead of your Excel spreadsheet. Let's take a look. This is where we want to take a look at. So let's just let's just dive into problem five. What what the heck? So. Um, a mechanical device will cost $20,000 when purchased. Maintenance will cost $1,000 each year. The device will generate revenues of $5,000 each year. At the end of five years, the salvage value is expected to be seven grand. What is the net present value of this proposal using 8.3% discount rate? Um, please treat them separately. Okay. Um, Well, first of all, Joe, that's a really well-formulated solution. Um, I don't know if it's right or not, but um, good job displaying your your solution. So, uh, mechanical device. We'll call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just right off the bat, and again, I'm not sure if this is right or not. I'm a little surprised that your net present value is um, less than twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> so let me let me take a crack at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a crack at it. Just just reading it cold the way um, the way I'm seeing this thing could be right. Could be wrong. We'll take a look. ETEC 214. Uh, learning Unit 2. Um, Quiv. Oh, and let me see. Uh, Sean, I promised to answer these, and maybe maybe we're already looking at them. Um, one and two. Let's just we'll take a look at three also. If we have a problem. I don't know about four. Uh, all the variables. I, th I think problem five is probably the one of the bigger um, five and six are one of the bigger issues. So yeah, let's just take a look at those. I think that's that's the um, problem five, problem four. I do not even have a problem five, so I'm starting this from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to do control A. Oops. Control A. Oops. Okay, here we go. Copy. Um, I'm going to make myself a new book, sheet one, I'm just going to call it P5, and I'm going to um, copy, paste. All right, and let's go ahead and make this as big as we can. So I think this, the suggestion was to um, um, chop this up into a couple different problems. Um, again, this is this is um, live studio audience. No rehearsal here whatsoever. <laughs> All right. So um, 
the device is going to cost twenty thousand bucks, and and so what what you're I think what you're what you're thinking about here is you want to get this system up and running. So you're going to ask somebody for money um, in in the expectation that you're going to make money or at least not lose money in the long run. So. Um, um, let's let's run it like this. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, I'm going to take this guy right now. I'm going to make sure that my um, little accounting machine is working here. So, if I've got um, uh, a one thousand dollar gig, and I'm going to run it at um, Let's just say uh, 0 0.01 percent. Uh, let's, let's just do uh, 0 0.00. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So what this is telling me is, uh, and then I'm just going to take these and and round them to the nearest dollar. So currency single decimal all right so if I've got a thousand bucks now um, that thousand dollars is going to be the same present and future with no interest rate I can also see that if I'm going to um, get that back over um, five years it's going to be 200 bucks a year so there's your annuity versus your present your annuity versus your future if though this thousand dollars is your annuity and you're looking at either the present or future value that just means if you get five thousand bucks a year the present value is five thousand uh sorry one thousand a year for five years the present value is five thousand same thing a thousand dollars a year for five years the future so my my machine is working so now what i'm going to do is just take this whole thing right here i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste it um, i'm going to I'm going to just paste it a few times just in case I need it. Okay. So mechanical device will cost $20,000 um, when purchased. So mm, present value of the proposal. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and stick that um, 20,000 bucks in here. And I don't even know what happens if I put a zero in this box. Yeah, okay. Um, that's good. And I'm going to put in my 8.3. Uh, 8.3. 8.3%. Okay, now, um, should we do, get the lights? Yeah. I'm having trouble seeing my keyboard. Um, okay. Thank you. Two oh 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 twenty thousand bucks. Now, um, so what I'm what I'm looking at right now, I I know that I'm going to buy this mechanical device in year zero. It's it's like right now dollars. So, um, in a sense, this first part you don't even really need the functions because I can see that what we're looking at is the the present value. So I'm just going to I'm just going to call this thing, you know, mech cost, mechanical cost. Okay. Now I'm going to call this next one maintenance. Um, maintenance is going to cost me a thousand bucks a year. So there's my thousand already. I've already got five years in there. What I need is my eight point three. Now. This thousand dollars is my um, is my annuity. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is, and, here, and here's here's where I frequently get confused. I can't tell if the eight point five is a um, a bonus or a penalty. So let's just let's just think that um, let's just think that through right now. I think what we're doing, we're assuming that um, to spend a dollar um, right now, 
um, if I can either get a dollar right now or a dollar and um, 8.3 cents in a year, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what we need to do there is treat that like an annuity. And then the, um, yeah, so the present value is, is what we're looking for. So if there was, um, so in other words, I can either get 39.61 now or $1,000 a year because my money's growing at 8.3%. That's the way I'm reading that thing. So I'm going to take that one um, and just highlight it. And again, I hope I'm right. <laughs> no disclaimers. This is just, just, just the thought process. I'd, be, I'd love to discuss it more. And I'm just going to call this the, the present value. So I'm just highlighting in green the chunks that are I think they're going to go into our final solution. Okay, so I've got the mechanical cost. I've got the maintenance cost. Now let's look at the uh, revenue. Revenue. Um, and I'm looking at 5000 a year. And again, I'm looking at that 8.3%. And I've got five years. Now, um, again, I'm going to treat this the same way. Uh, uh, oh, I know what to do. Let me just, I just thought of something. Let's, let's make this a cost. It's negative. No problem. It's through a negative side. Maintenance is also a cost. Negative. There we go. Um, revenue is positive. Five thousand um, bucks. That's the annuity, and we're looking at the the, the present value. So the present value, since we're at eight point three percent discount, you can either have five thousand dollars a year or nineteen thousand eight hundred seven dollars now. Let's just put that. And it's positive because you're bringing it in. Okay. At the end of five years, the salvage value will be $7,000. What's the net present value? So let's go uh, salvage. So you've worn the thing out, but not quite. Um, underline the amount is um, $7,000. Um, the discount rate is still 8.3 five years. So what we're looking for is the, um, what we just put in here is the, is the future value, and we want to get the present value out. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, always, I always get these backwards too. Um, um, yeah, if this was... Um, so let's let's think of it this way. If um, let's think of it this way. Um, you you could so the seven thousand bucks is sitting out there in the past. Um, and again, there's a, there's a couple different ways to think about that. And, and that's, here's where I get um, myself uh, tied up. Because it, it's, it's either this number or this one. I just have trouble. P given F is the first one? Present. Is this, that's right here? Yeah. Yeah. So technically, this is this is where you want to go. You know, so given F, here's P. Um, Okay, and, and I guess here's the way to think about this. Here's the way to think about this. Um, you, you could either have, you know, $4,698 now, um, and you, you could invest that at 8.3%, and then you would have the $7,000 in the future. Yeah. But instead, you know you're going to have this $7,000 salvage thing in the future. $4,698 is what it's worth now. Is that okay? Yeah. Chris is nodding his head. He's obviously more awake than I am. <laughs> so all I'm going to do now, I've, I've, done, I've done four problems in parallel. And from here, I'm just going to say this equals the sum of that number, comma, that number, comma, that number, comma, that number. 
think I got all of them. Close the paren. Five hundred forty-four bucks. <laughs> okay, so what did I do wrong? Um, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, let's see here. What's it? Um, if let, let's just see what happens if I flip these negative signs. Let's see if this makes a little more sense. Um, what is the net present value of this proposal? Another, another way to look at it would be to take actually take this thing and I guess what I'm struggling with is to figure out what what's in the um, cost column and what's what's in the revenue column is, uh, revenue correct 19 well if I'm if I'm making um, if I'm making five thousand a year that's my annuity for five years. Because uh, we want, we know the annuity, and we want the present. Yeah. You, what'd you get? Another way to say is like, hey, I need I need twenty thousand dollars now. That's that's the value. That's what it's worth. Um, I need basically a thousand dollars a year. But if I've got my money invested at eight point three, um, that's the same as thirty nine sixty one. So that's we'll just call that as positive. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get nineteen thousand. Um, Just let's dig in and see what um, let's just dig in and see what other other folks got. I guess we already looked at Joe's. Uh, Eight point three. It's not clear to me. Let's see if he's got if he's got a thousand bucks a year, five thousand a year coming in, seven thousand purchase price. Um, there's n Okay, so I see. What, okay, so what Joe's done is count the two, the twenty thousand and the one thousand is negative. Let's let's do that and see what we come up with. See if we can at least agree on that. Twenty and the one are negative. Um, I think that's what we already did, didn't we? Um, negative one thousand. Um, negative twenty thousand. Five hundred forty-four bucks. <laughs> Let, let's see. Um, is that twenty thousand dollar hit? Um, five years, five thousand. I came up with five forty, five hundred forty-four. Okay, that's what I got too. Oh. And I and it looks like I did the same thing that Joe did. Let's just take a look here. So the that it's hard for me to tell which. Um, what values he's actually using here. Purchase price. I'm guessing that this negative, well, no, it's hard to tell. 40, okay, so he's getting the same salvage. That's, that's, that's good. 
um, puts in the present, what's the annuity? I'm not sure why he's using this, this guy at all. I don't think I use the A over P. Um, I don't think I use the A over P anywhere. My P over A is 15,845. For which, 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 uh, revenue. What was it? 15,000? 15,845. 15,845. Did you put 8.3% in? Yeah, 0.03. Okay. Um, well, well, you know, let's, um, well, I'm going to go out to a calculator really quick here and make sure that's correct. Um, Present value of an annuity. Investopedia. Okay. Interest rate, um, 8.3. Number of periods, 5. Payment amount, uh, 5,000, right? Mm -hmm. Calculate. Well, you got it, right? Okay. So maybe you've got a glitch in your, uh, yeah, your calculator. I came up with the same number you got. <laughs> the same final number? Yeah, 544. <laughs> what was your... But did, You must have had two PAs, though, right? Yeah. I'm going to use my PF. You did not? I did. You did. 46, I got the same number on my PF. What's your other PA? Oh, did you just put 4,000 in there instead of 1 and 5? That's probably what happened. I put 4,000 in my annual. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got you got it right. I just I just separated the two. Okay. Okay, we're on the same page there. Okay. Um, so now the, the, yeah, so the question is, well, and I just did exactly what um, I just did exactly what Joe did. He's got he's got the purchase price as a as a cost. He's got the maintenance as a cost. He's got his his income coming in. He's got his salvage um, coming in too. Eighty six. It's, it's you know again it's tough to tell where that um, where that number came from. Let's look at a couple others. We'll see what um, we'll see what Doty came up with. Let's see what his questions were. Hmm. Yeah. So here's here's one thing, and I I think I think you've done this right. Sean with the negative twenty thousand. That's the same way I did it. This though is 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 not correct because you didn't include the eight point three percent. That eight point three percent has to be applied to everything. Um, same thing here. The um, the five thousand times five. If there were zero interest, yeah, that would be fine. And then the salvage, yeah, it's seven thousand bucks in five years. But we need to know what it is now. So, I don't, you know, it's kind of weird. I've got the same numbers that, um, that Bauer used, um, but I came, and I, I think I did it the same way. I've got this guy as, um, as negative. This is the, the sum of the salvage value, which is sitting right there, the revenue, which is positive, coming in, the maintenance, which is negative, going out, and the um, and the the capital cost going out. So I don't see that we've made any mistakes. 
a $544 project sounds pretty pretty slim though. I mean it's um Let's think about this. So I'm, I'm trying to think of this from a practical stand, standpoint. Like, would someone say, hey, um, Layton, here's $544. Why don't you go out and buy a $20,000 um, machine? But maybe maybe that's not the way to think about it. Um, no, yeah. The way, here, yeah, here, here, here's the way to think about it. And it could be right. I, I, again, I don't know the solutions, but let's 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 think about it from: Should I pull the trigger on this now? And the question is like, can I make money right now? Like, would, would someone just say, well, if like give them this idea, like, sure, that's a great idea. Here's five hundred forty-four bucks. Woohoo! Um, let's run it a little bit differently, and. Um, Let's just say we run it for 10 years, and I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be worth more. Let's just run that as a little hypothesis. So I don't have to touch the cap. Um, the cap. We're going to run the same maintenance for 10 years, same revenue, 10 years, and um, yeah, let's just say we can stretch the thing out and it's still worth 7000 bucks in 10 years. That makes a little more sense. The number did go up. It, the the thing the thing is worth more money now because we ran it out for ten years so could be right five hundred forty four bucks didn't didn't you know just doesn't seem like the the proper number but I don't I don't see any mistakes we've made okay so just to review what we did we we counted the um, upfront cost the maintenance cost and the negative brackets our formulas worked out with, with negatives running through them. The revenue we're going to get, um, five thousand bucks a year, is worth nineteen thousand dollars right now. The salvage value, if we sell it for seven grand in five years, it's the same as having it at um, forty-six ninety-eight right now. Okay, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to move on. I don't yeah. know if it's right. I don't know if it's wrong, but that's uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Thirty-seven minutes. That was kind of long. It's okay. Got to get the my brain dusted off. So we're like